Hello and welcome to this D365 Finance and Operations EAM demo. I'm Philip Carey and in this demo I'm going to look at how we set up the assets in terms of their work orders, how we structure that to get us ready for the work order execution. This is part of a series of demos looking at the Enterprise Asset Management Suite. Okay, so we've seen this particular diagram before from our previous presentation and what we looked at in, in the top left hand corner was how we structure the assets, how we put them together, how we link them together and what, what those assets relationships are to one another and to an asset location. In this particular demo we're going to look at how we set up the basic job types and the planned work and the rounds, how that sort of gets put onto a schedule and uh, so it's ready for the generation of the works orders. And the final part we'll be looking at the execution part. So this is the area in red is what we're going to be looking at in here. The main sort of area that we're going to be looking at in more detail is this job type. But before we do that it's probably best to give you a quick overview again of the steps that are involved in a work order. So in every work order process that we go through, which is the mechanism to carry out a piece of maintenance work, we have a works order which is created. We then have to schedule and allocate that in time. We then need to execute the work after we've given it to a, an individual or a team executes it as a, as a team. And then once it's finished, we debrief that and close it. That's the standard process. On top of that, you'll find that there are demands coming from either preventative maintenance or from reactive. We also have to look about how we're actually going to get the parts from logistics planning through procurement or from the stores, or we may even subcontract it. And the final part is that if we take any rebuildables or removables out of the asset structure and move different ones back in again, we have to be able to track that. Once a job is finished, we've obviously got the reports and inquiries to give you a view of that for your historical and asset knowledge base. But we can look at that feedback to either create additional work orders to complete the job or look at how we can adjust the preventative maintenance plan. And then finally, we have these assets and counters, which can be used to provide a, a counter based way of doing preventive maintenance as opposed to a time based. And then underneath that, which we'll, we'll look at in a second, is, is some of these other areas down in here about how we have to set up the asset management system so that it's uh, efficiently managed and maintained itself. OK, so this is the end of the presentations. We'll now go into the demo itself. In this demo, we're going to be looking at the setting up of the core data for enterprise asset management as well as the processes to generate the maintenance schedules to get them ready for carrying out a works order plan or a maintenance plan for the business. Now, if we looked at the diagram that I showed earlier, in the center was a description for the job types. Now, this is quite important because it really is the center about how we build up asset management. First of all, when we're carrying out maintenance, we do certain types of jobs. So we'll have like condition assessments or we do corrective or we just be doing general servicing of jobs. So that's your category and when you're carrying out work you tend to have different things that you'll do at different times of the year. So in this particular case there's a particular service that we do after a thousand hours but there's annual services, there's monthly services, weekly services etc. Each type of service re often requires a different set of uh, checks that have to be done and there's maybe a different part. So this is quite important because this is telling you the variations of the work that we do. The next area that we need to look at is obviously there's there's trades involved. So we have a, a number of different trades involved in our assets. But the thing I want to focus on is the job types. So when we were looking at the uh, one before we could see that there were certain types of ones which were going to be either inspection, uh, preventative maintenance or condition assessments or service. But within that, for example, we've got a number of different 
aspects of the types of work that we do. So we're doing some, we could do some facilities maintenance on the whole plant or a particular line. We could do some calibration work or preventative work. If we have a look at the preventative work here, just for an example, we can see that there are five variants. So we can do preventive maintenance based on these variant types, which will obviously have a different time against it. And we could see that that is affecting 26 asset types, which is the type of assets that are that we have in our business, which has a whole a overall view of 100 assets in total. So what this gives us is a sort of way of collecting all the work together under a particular job type. Now, what will happen is that depending on the type of job you do, if we have a look at this one, so if we're doing preventative maintenance and we're doing it on the different types of maintenance, we can have a different level of hours that are going to be booked to it and uh, items that are going to be used. And if we're using subcontract, it could be an outside expense. And then there's also checklists that need to be done. So this is how we build up our matrix of the types of work that we need to do for our assets. Now, this is important because it's really linked to the forecast. So if we've got this as a plan, this will give us an overview about what we think we're going to have to spend if we carry out all that work over a particular year. It can also be used as a default. So when we carry out that job, those are the defaults that we bring into the work order. And it can also, from the spare side, be used to forecast when we think we're going to need spares so that our MRP can make sure that that information is there and available. We can also link it to tools if we if a particular process is involved in a, a, a tool, so we can manage that at the same time. Now, it's quite interesting to see that if we have a look at how we set this up within the forecast, um, this is where we define what hours we think we're going to be using, or what parts we're going to be using and what expenses. And this is the sort of like the benchmark for that particular process. We can see that we can set up these not only just based on the trade or the type of the maintenance, but also by the manufacturer, the model or the individual assets. So this is one example that we have in here. If we had a look at uh, another one for a repair, for example, and had a look at its defaults, you'd probably find us just one standard set of hours from that. So what this is really telling you is that you can control the hours and how you do things from a central place and then that ripples through the rest of the maintenance plans. So it's an efficient way of pulling the orders together. Now the other thing is that jobs are used in the way that we carry out maintenance and the way that we, we show maintenance is, is really in the preventative maintenance plans. Now, preventative maintenance plans has two types. It has a, well, obviously a, a plan and it's done for your different types of assets. So if you have an asset and you're looking at its life, you may have certain plans that you do for its introduction, for its base of life going from, you know, a yearly cycle. And then you'll have some conditional assessments that you do a certain years into its use. And then you may have a set of plans that you do as it starts to get towards the end of the life, maybe more maintenance. That's your plan. And that is what we have down in here. Uh, it tells you the job type, which we've just looked at, um, or whether it's calibration or preventive maintenance or whatever, or just general service, tells you the type of work that needs to be done, tells you how the frequency. And we can have this either based on a counter or a time we've got down in here. And then we've actually got the whole sort of process about whether you automatically create the works order as a result of you know when you get to the end of a, a account. So it's quite a, a sophisticated way of, of pulling together the plan. We've got suppression built into that. And then what we do here, we take that plan and then we apply that to, well, you have a different options. You can either apply that to a set of assets. So an individual asset has this particular plan, or you can apply that to a set of asset types. So all these assets of this type have this particular plan in place. And then you can even apply that to a functional location. So you might say that this particular line, when we that to all the assets within inside that functional location have this particular maintenance plan. So it's likely that you're going to have different types of maintenance plans depending on the functionality and stress that that asset is going to be during its lifetime. The other thing that you could do, which is 
rather similar, which is uh, a maintenance round. So a maintenance round is probably done more from uh, an inspection point of view, where you're just running a line and um, maybe it's the start of the day or the end of the day or over the weekend. You're doing some general checks on the overall plant and your inspection inspector is going around and he's he's going through and he's collecting information on spotting issues and then raising works orders. So this is again, we can do against a line or a functional location, but we can also give that to a pool of work so that we can sort of push work into that area. So, so when you do this round, can you also carry out these checks as well? Okay, so that's the overall process of how we do the setup. And that's a general setup. There are other setups in here which are to do with in terms of setting up when you find things, how you're going to set up your faults and uh, what faults you're going to pull together. So these ones could be the faults and symptoms and areas that you collect. Again, this is important for the process of, of making sure that you've got your asset knowledge and you can put plans to look at those. But once you've got all that information, we then go and we need to go and run the plan. And that's really done with inside the periodic side with inside in here. So this is where we set up the preventative maintenance plan. So you schedule a plan and you've got a basically a background process which runs through on a particular period, how long in advance you want to do your plan for. So once you've got your plan, which we can see when we have a look at the maintenance schedule. So we run this, it creates a maintenance schedule. And then what we can see is that it's going to create a number of different lines. So we've looked at all the maintenance schedules. So this will be all jobs that have been generated um, either from the maintenance plan or the round. We can see that it's it's created a, a set of all the requirements that we have in here. And some of these you'll see will have a work order assigned to them and some won't. So it really depends on, on the process that, that we go through in terms of how we schedule. If we have a look at the um, all the open schedules, these are the ones without a work order against it. And this is a process by which either you are a planner and you're giving it to, you're creating a works order and looking at this one and saying, yes, this is what I want to do this week. So you do a release. Um, and you can go through the process of saying, of defining what you're going to do for each of the weeks or days based on the priority of work coming through. So there's a whole process of setting up the work order um, and assigning it to pools and just going through the, the whole process of carrying out either a, a maintenance schedule for a round or a, or, or a maintenance plan. So that's really the crux of it. And what that will end up doing is it will end up creating a work order which will then be executed on. And we'll, we'll show that in the last section. So that gives you the overall view about the setup and to bring it all together. So we've actually got a set of work orders to, to work on, which will main, give us the assurance that the maintenance plant that we've got there is fit for purpose and it will deliver what is required. For more information about asset management and asset management thinking, as well as other videos in this series, please use the link below. Thank you.